GCSE English Language Stories. Starter activity. Think of your favourite story in a film, series or other medium. Note it down and get ready to discuss it with another class member. Think of three things you like about your chosen story. They might be the setting, the story theme, the acting, the surprise ending, the story ordering, the artwork, the music, the emotions and relationships, or the moral it teaches. Write these down and ask your neighbour about their choices and why they chose them. Write theirs down. For example, my chosen film is The Notebook. This is my favourite story because there is a surprise ending, the characters are complex and well developed, and the mood is positive. Your turn. Please write, my favourite story is, and write the name, three reasons why, and then talk to your classmate, find out what their favourite story is, and their three reasons why. Thank you. How do you make stories engaging? by thinking of what's obvious and choosing something that is not. Here is a picture of an older man. What are the obvious and unexpected things that you could say about it? Obvious things might be that he is old, sad or poor as he doesn't look very well looked after. Something unexpected might be that he used to be an Olympian or saved a life or you could write the story from a new perspective such as that of his dog. What might be obvious about this picture? These are crows in a cemetery, so you might associate the picture with a sad story or even death. Did you know that crows sometimes give you gifts if you're kind to them? Perhaps this, these crows could be fed by a cemetery visitor every day. Maybe they're tame, maybe they might find something important, or give the person who's feeding them gifts. Here is a ship in rough seas. What might be the obvious things to say about this picture? Maybe you might be escaping from a sinking ship. More unexpectedly, someone could be swimming towards the ship to, for rescue, or after rescuing, or you're a seagull. That would be a new perspective. What would be the obvious things to say about these people on a bus? It brings to mind people who are tired and overworked or maybe on a very boring journey. Unexpectedly, someone's on their way to receive the winnings of a lottery ticket or an audition, or you see someone you've been searching for. Lastly, what would be obvious about this train station? The obvious thing to say would be that someone's going on a journey. Maybe you could change the story so that someone's returning from a challenging event or write it from the perspective of a ghost or a pigeon. We're going to move on to making a story. Mix and match. Can you surprise your reader? Think of some more ideas. Let's look at the options. Here are some characters, situations, deeds and objects that might occur in a story. You can chop and change these. Some of them will work together. Some of them won't. Can you make an unexpected story? Could you even make a metaphor from using these which would appeal to your readers emotions? So the characters might be a member of the royal family, an ordinary person, a swimmer, a boy, a young adult, a worker, a dog or a woman. Situations, helicopter pilot, at the shops, at sea, war, an artist, excluded from friends, lost and wants company, being chased. Deeds, for example, a rescue, helping someone, drowning, saving a life, painting a mural, making a friend, following a fox or running. Objects, a mountain, money, a floating football, school uniform, spray cans, note on a desk, home or their lost dog. Can you write a story about something which ends in an unexpected way? Here is a story written by an ex-student of mine. 
It's called Free Runner. It ends unexpectedly. She perched at the edge of the roof of the abandoned eight-storey building overlooking the lit-up big city. She was always an outsider, and the abandoned building she currently perched on was her getaway place, a place where she could relax and switch off, be herself and do what she loved away from all the responsibilities. Even though it looked abandoned on the outside, the inside held a beautiful and decorated cosy interior, and it was all hers. A black Converse bag was slung loosely on her shoulder containing several cans of spray paint. The hood of her yellow cropped hoodie pulled over her head as the wind blew her short curly brown hair lightly. Sapphire blue eyes scanned the city, busy and lit up in all its glory and beauty, until they landed on the grand prize for the night in the distance, the Royal Palace. It was risky for sure, but the thrill was always the best part about her hobby graffiti art. She stood up and took a few steps back from the ledge before taking a running start and sprinting off the edge of the roof onto the neighbouring lower rooftop. Her stance was agile as she ran, sprang and jumped from rooftop to rooftop. It filled her with adrenaline, heart pumping faster as she enjoyed the rush from the thrill. It was one of her favourite hobbies, of course. Unlike what her parents wanted her to do, she would get a handful of their anger when she got home, that's for sure but she didn't care. Another thing she found thrilling was the chase she got from the guards patrolling the city, like guard dogs. Well known for her rogue behaviour and the colourful graffiti she left around the city, most of the guard force knew her well, as she always liked to give them a good run. On her way to the palace, she spotted a large, untouched white wall of a building, the perfect place for a warm-up piece before her bigger art project. After she was all finished and satisfied, she signed it with her signature watermark, the name everyone knew her by. Royal. So what you'd expect from a member of the royal family might be that they're a helicopter pilot who rescues people from mountains, like Prince William. But instead, what Nikki did was make them an artist, a graffiti artist, who paints a mural in the city using spray cans. This is completely unexpected. What techniques did you notice about this story written by one of my ex-students? I wonder if you noticed any of the following features. There's a detailed description of her and her city. The wind blew her short curly brown hair lightly. There's detailed description of her emotional and physical feelings. She was always an outsider. Adrenaline, heart pumping faster, she enjoyed the rush from the thrill. There's a surprise, unexpected ending. She's royal. There's foreshadowing of the surprise, the words palace and also responsibilities. And there's powerful visual imagery all the way through. She always liked to give them a good run. So we've seen how to put a surprise in a story. How else can we make a piece of writing creative? Here is a picture of four people. One of these pieces of writing in the blue rectangles is creative and one isn't. Can you guess which is which? Piece one. Three people are sitting by a table. Two have wine. One is using his phone and one is standing. All are smiling. Two are wearing white clothes. There is a hedge behind them. Piece two. Sally shyly looked over Rosalind's shoulder at Richard's phone. He and Rosalind seemed to be enjoying a private joke and her heart sank. She hadn't noticed James. So the creative piece is piece two. Why is piece two more creative? Well, it describes Sally's emotions. She's described as shy. What kind of word is shyly? It's an adverb. There's intrigue. What will happen next? There's a dilemma. There's a love triangle. And lastly, her heart sank. What's this technique? It's a metaphor. The things used in this passage are called language techniques. As well as making your writing engaging by including a surprise and language techniques, if you can, 
can. You also need to get the technical aspects of your writing right. So you should be using paragraphs, punctuating your sentences properly, using pun other punctuation correctly, checking your spelling and grammar as best as you can. Use capital letters correctly, not all the way through or not at all. Use language devices such as adjectives, similes and metaphors if you can. Vary your sentences such as using simple, complex, dialogue and questions. Use a wide vocabulary avoiding slang such as massive and sorted etc unless it's appropriate. Question 5. A magazine has asked for contributions for their creative writing section. Either write a description suggested by this picture of two people running in a town or write a story about something unexpected. If you need more than 45 minutes, please draw a line when 45 minutes comes and then continue writing. So for paper one, question five, there are 40 marks. 24 marks are for content and organisation, which includes things like language techniques and paragraphs. 16 marks are for technical accuracy, which is spelling, punctuation and grammar. You have 45 minutes without extra time or an hour with extra time. I'm going to let you write for as long as you want today, but no more than an hour and 15. Plan your answer. We'll do that today and write in full sentences using paragraphs. Before you finish, proofread your work for errors before handing in. So right now we're going to plan ideas for writing your story or description in your book. Write the final piece on a loose sheet, which I will give you when you do your writing. Before we start, what have you found out today? Here is a summary of all the things about my classes that you need to understand by the end of today. My name is Ruth Levy and there is my email address. That's the first point. Number two, my YouTube channel with lessons is called Ruth's English Channel. Number three, books are stored tidily in the cupboard at the back of 506. Number four, leave books at college until Easter, please. Number five, bring a pen on English days and you should have set a reminder in your phone. Number six, send Ruth an image of your exam results in October. Set a reminder on your phone if you haven't done so. Number seven, all work to be handwritten unless you're assessed as needing a PC or had one at school. Number eight, tell Ruth about any learning needs via the slip you are given. Follow and act on Ruth's feedback. Problem group, groups of learners will be separated. In terms of your writing, make stories engaging by using an unexpected ending. That's the first point. Number two, use as many language techniques as you can. We'll do more on those later in the course. Number three, check your spelling, grammar and punctuation before finishing. Please copy all of these points down in your book now. Creative writing assessment. Here's a reminder of the writing aims. Number one, make stories engaging by using an unexpected ending. Use as many language techniques as you can. Check your spelling, grammar and punctuation before finishing. Here is the task. You're writing for a creative writing competition and you're to write a, descript a description suggested by this picture. You don't have to exactly describe the picture. Remember, it's creative or write a story about something unexpected. That does not have to be linked to the picture. You should spend 45 to 1 hour 15 on this task. Please proofread your work for errors before handing in. Your specification is AQA GCSE language 8700. Here is the course content. There should be some information in this in your exercise book. 
Paper one is fiction with one source. Question one is key ideas from the text. Question two is language. Question three is structure. Question four is evaluation. How does the writer, and then it'll give you a task. Question five is writing, create a story or description. Paper two, non-fiction, two sources. Question one is key ideas. Question two is summarise one text. Question three is about language. Question four is to compare the two texts. Question five is a writing question to argue your views on a topic. Here are two useful books for the course. On the left is the AQA GCSE English Language one year course book, which um, I have used in the past and you might find useful to assist you with your revision. And then on the right is a book called Writing with Stardust, which is full of all sorts of words, language techniques, and ways to make your writing a bit more stardusty and interesting to read.